Hello, friends. It is the end of the road for Chapter 8, and Chapter 8.6, Day 2, kind of a doozy because it's going to combine two concepts that we've done that are kind of tricky. Adding the rational functions and then solving. One thing that stays the same is you got to make sure that you don't use a number that makes the bottom zero. So I try to remember to check. All of these have the same denominator and it's 4x and that will be zero when x is zero. So that's going to be the number I can't use. So when I'm done, I make sure that none of the answers I got are zero. And so in order to solve, I need the whole entire problem to have a common denominator. So I draw myself a big fat line. And in this case, they already have the same denominator. So I actually don't have to do anything to the tops. So I'll have my 3x plus 1, then my plus 5, and then my equals 27. And then you just solve the top. You do not have to solve the bottom. You just let it sit there until you're done. So now you're going to pretend you're in Algebra 1, um, solving 3x plus, and I'm going to put these two together as a 6 and make that equal 27. Taking away the 6, I'm going to end at 21. Dividing by the 3, I'm going to end at 7. I check back quick. 7 is not 0, so 7 is good. This looks confusing. Uh, whenever something's not a fraction, then but it's in a fraction problem, I like to put it over 1 so that I can see it as a fraction. Now, what I have down here is x minus 2. That's great, but everybody has to have the same denominator. That's why it's called common. So I need everyone to have that x minus 2. This guy already has it. This guy already has it. This guy does not. So I go to the top. I do not need to adjust the 10 because it already has the proper denominator. And on the other side of the equal sign, I do not need to adjust the 5x because that is already over the proper denominator. So the only thing that has to get adjusted is this plus 7 part because that's not over anything. It's over 1. So in order for it to be over x minus 2, I would have to multiply that in, but then I have to multiply the top by what it was missing as well. So now I'm going to go ahead and solve just the top, keeping in mind that when x minus 2 equals 0, x would be 2. So that's going to be an excluded value. I can't actually get that as an answer. So I'm going to take this problem down here and solve it like it's Algebra 1. I'm going to distribute the 7 to here and here, so 7x minus 14. I'm going to move the 7x over so that I have all the x's on one side. 10 minus 14 is negative 4 on this side. 5 minus 7 is negative 2. So when I divide by negative 2, I find out that x is going to have a value of negative 2. Oh, I'm sorry, it's actually going to be positive 2 because the negatives cancel, which is actually a problem because negative 4 divided by negative 2 is positive 2, but when I look back, I can't use that. That's an excluded value because it would make the original problem 0 on the bottom, so the only answer I got can't be used, and so this one I would put like that or I would write no solution or something to indicate that the only option I got can't be used, so therefore, there's not an answer. This one has the same kind of problem in that the 1 looks weird because it's not over anything, so I'm going to write it as 1 over 1, 8 over, and this one's over x minus 5, and then the 3 is just over an x. So when I go to get my common denominator like we did in 8, 5, I'm going to need a 1, which I don't need to write. I'm going to write an x for this guy, but I also need an x minus 5 for this guy. So now I'm going to go through and I'm going to um, take each of the top original tops. This was a 1. The 1 was not over any of the bottom. So it would have to be adjusted by the x and the x minus 5. So that means this top gets multiplied by the x and x minus 5. Then I move on to the next fraction, this one. The 8 was already over the x minus 5, but not this other x. So I'd have to multiply by that, and then I adjust the top the same way. Now I'm at my equal sign. I'm at my 3. My 3 was already over the x part, 
but not already over the x minus 5 part. So that has to get multiplied by the 3 because I'm adjusting that last one by what it was missing. So now I'm done here. The only thing I need from my bottom is to be like, what makes this equal 0? X being 5. What makes this equal 0? X being 0. So those are going to be the two numbers I cannot use. So I'm going to take this problem, now that I adjusted the tops, and just solve the top. So I'm distributing this 1x and getting x squared minus 5x minus 8x. Here I'm getting 3x minus 15. So I see an x squared. I'm probably going to have to um, do some factoring. But first, I'm going to put these together because they are alike. So at this point, I'd have x squared minus 13x. And then on this side, I have a 3x minus 15. When you're factoring, it's got to be equal to 0. So I need to move this over. And I'll have to move this over. So these will be gone, and I'll get 0. Here, I'll have x squared. Here... I'll get a negative 16x and then plus 15. So I'm going to use my blue card to help me figure out my factors. For 15, I have 1 and 15 or 3 and 5. I need them to add up to be 16. So the option I need is a 1 and a 15. In order to get a negative 16 out of it, they both have to be minus. And then finally, to get my answers, what would make this zero if x was positive one? What would make this equal zero if x was positive 15? When I look back up here, my two numbers I can't use are five and zero, but I didn't get five and zero. I got one and 15, so I am good to go. So this is one of the hardest things we do, honestly because you have to be able to factor and FOIL and combine and distribute and adjust the bottoms and adjust the tops. So it's definitely a challenge. But every single one is kind of the same process. Get your bottom factors. So this one's going to be just x plus 2. This one factors. I need 6 in a way that adds up to 5. So I'm going to use 3 and 2 to get a plus 5. They both have to be plus, And then I'm replacing that with the factored version. And then I have an x plus 3. So now I'm going to get a common denominator through the whole thing. I'll need an x plus 2 that takes care of these two because they already have that in common. Then I'm going to need an x plus 3 because that guy needs one and so does this. But they already have that in common. So it, uh, it's going to work for both. Now I'm going to adjust each top in this first fraction I already have this part, but not the x plus 3. So I multiply the top by what it was missing, which would be the x plus 3. In the middle fraction, my plus 2, it's already over both parts up here, so I don't adjust it. Then I'm at the equal sign. Then I'm at the 5. The 5 is already over the x three part, x plus 3 part, but not the x plus 2. So since it's missing that on the bottom, I would need to put that on the top as well. Now I'm going to do the two things. I'm going to solve this part, and then I'm going to make sure from down here I know what numbers I can't use. x plus 3 will be 0 if I use a negative 3. So that's ruled out. Here, x plus 2 will be 0 if x is negative 2. So that's ruled out. So if I get either of those answers and I solve the top, they're not real answers. I can't use them. Is there another problem? Okay, let's steal a little space over here. So I'm going to take this problem over. I'm going to distribute my x. So x squared plus 3x. And then I have a plus 2 from here. Then I have my equal sign. And then I'm distributing my 5. 5x five plus 10. Okay, 
So I need, again, because this is squared, I'm gonna have to move these guys over so that it's equal to zero. So I'm moving my minus five X and my minus 10 over. That eliminates everything over here, leaving me with zero. Here I get three minus five is two X, negative two X and two minus 10 is negative eight. And now I factor. So it's the same thing every single time. Now I need eight in a way that subtracts to be two. So that's going to be four times two. And in order for the two to be negative, I'll need minus here plus here. And then I'm gonna look and say, okay, what would make that equal zero? X would have to be negative two. What would make this equal zero? X would have to be positive four. And when I look back, the two numbers that I can't use are negative three and negative two, so this one is not a real answer. I can't use that because it was one of my excluded values because it makes this part zero on the bottom. So in the end, the only viable answer I have for that one is x equals four. All right, let's tackle this last one and then we'll do the word problem. Keeping in mind that when you do a word problem, it should be the exact same math as you were doing for the other problems on that page. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, okay, that is the bottom here, that is the bottom here, and this one factors. It's the difference of two squares. So it factors into x plus one, x minus one. And so in the end, when I go to get my common denominator, I'll need an x minus one, which will work for this guy and this guy. And then I need an X plus one, which will accommodate these other two pieces. So now I'm gonna do that thing where I go through and adjust the top. This top was over an X minus one, but not the X plus one. So that's what I adjust the top by, because whatever I need to put down here, I'll need to put up here as well. This second fraction where I have the X, that was over the x plus one, but not the x minus one. And so then that's what this top gets adjusted by. Then I'm at my equal sign. And then I'm at my 38. But my 38 was already over both pieces. It looks like I forgot to do this one, the filled in notes, sorry. And so, um, I don't have to adjust it because it was already over the denominator I'm using. That means that I'm ready to go ahead and solve the top and then figure out what numbers I can't use. So X minus one will be zero when X is one. So that's gonna be a number I can't use. X plus one will be zero when X is negative one. So that's another number I can't use. So I'm gonna go ahead and solve the top. This one's gonna be tricky because I'm gonna have to foil here, distribute here. So I don't have a ton of room because I wrote messy. Oh well, I'll give it a shot. Foiling is gonna give me x squared, then the outside is plus one x, the inside is minus two x, and the last is minus two. Here, distributing my x is gonna give me x squared, and then minus one X, and then I have my 38. I'm gonna collect like terms. This X squared plus this X squared is two X squared. Then I have one X minus two X, which is negative one, minus one more, which is negative three X's. And then I have a minus two equals 38 but I'm gonna probably have to factor, so I'm gonna take away the 38 to both sides so that I can have something equal to zero. And I'm gonna have two X squared minus three X, and then these are gonna actually give me a minus 40. This one's kind of gross because I don't have a common term, like I can't take out a GCF. So I'm gonna go to my card and I'm gonna be looking for a way, this is the one where I do a two here and here for now because of that two out in front. This is a really challenging problem to factor. I'll need 80 in a way that subtracts to be three. So how do I make 80? One times 80, two times 40, 
um, four times 20, five times 16, um, does six go into 80? No, eight goes into 80, 10 times. I'm actually not seeing, I wonder if I did something wrong. I certainly hope I didn't at the end of this video. I can't think of one that would make I'm going to get out my calculator. Actually, I'm getting out my phone calculator, which is not ideal. Um, and 10, 80, divide by 15. Nope. I feel like something's not right. Because I need something that's going to subtract to be 3. Let me just quick check back here. Sorry, guys. Um, I adjusted my tops, x squared. I'm going through my old work to make sure that it's correct. And then I had minus x squared minus x, and here I had a negative two, and there I had a 38. Take that away, now I'm at 40. 40 times two is 80. I'm definitely forgetting some combination because I need a three in the middle. And I know you probably know what it is and you're sitting there just like waiting for me to get there. I might wave the white flag on this until I can go figure out what I'm doing wrong. I didn't do this in the filled in notes either, so I'm calling it quits on that one. I'll take a second look at it. I'm sorry, I realize I'm the math teacher, but now I wrote so much stuff that I have to start over. So, okay, let's do this word problem and get that over with. So far this season, the hockey team has won seven of its first 12 games. How many consecutive games does the team need to win to raise its winning percent to 75? Okay, that's kind of tricky. So if you're trying to do your winning percent, you're going to be doing wins over total. So you currently have seven wins out of 12, but you're going to add a certain number of wins. And consecutive means you win every single game in a row. So you're going to add seven more wins, but that means you're adding set, excuse me, you're adding X more wins because you don't know how many. And now you're adding X more games. Because if you win every game that you play, however many wins you have, that's how many additional games you have. And we're trying to make that equal 75%. So to me, the easiest way to do that is 75 out of 100. And then I'm going to be using cross multiplying like we did in the first day. So 75 times 12 plus X equals 100 times 7 plus X. I'm going to distribute that and get 900 plus 75x and 700 plus 100x. I'm going to get all the x's to one side. I'm going to move this 700 over. Now I have 200 equals 25x. So X is gonna be eight, so I need to win the next eight games, the next eight games in a row in order to get to that 75% win. You can totally stop watching because I'm stubborn. I'm gonna go back and figure out what the heck is wrong but with this one and why it's not factoring properly. So you can be done. I'm gonna take another run at this. X plus one times X minus one, we did that. Then we had ourselves a little x minus 1 and x plus 1 is a common denominator. We had our x minus 2, which had to get adjusted by the piece it was missing. We had our x that had to get adjusted by the piece it was missing. And we had our 38 that need, did not need to be adjusted at all because it was already over that denominator. Foiling these, I should get x squared minus x minus 2 Foiling these, I should get x squared minus x. So I'm going to have, and there it is, my friends. That's where the mistake was. I'm going to have x squared minus 2x squared, sorry, minus 2x's and then minus 2 equals 38. 
So that's going to be 2x squared minus 2x. And then when I bring this over to get 0, I'm going to have minus 40 equals 0. But now my life is better like it should have been because I can pull out a 2. And then I'm looking for 20 in a way that subtracts to be 1. So I can have a 5 and a 4 with a minus and a plus. That will only equal 0 if x is negative 4 or x is positive 5. And then I have to go back up here. And I had looked at this before, but now I erased it. I found out that x could not be 1 and x could not be negative 1. But I didn't get either of those answers. So there we go. I had a, a 3 in the middle here at some point. For some reason, my work was so messy. So I apologize for that. But all of this we went through before on how to get it. It's just that at this stage, I should have had a two there instead of a three, and then it works out a lot easier. Sorry about that. Hope you're a genius, way smarter than me. Bye.